Hare Krishna. Good evening and welcome to our last session on leadership principles. Um, as usual, I would like to start with thanking all of you for joining on time and patiently tolerating me for last six days, five days. Today's the sixth day. And I'm very, very happy that I could get an opportunity to uh, talk to all of you, present whatever I knew, whatever I've learned to all of you. And uh, it's been a very good experience with all of you as uh, the audience and the participants who have been very enthusiastic and very, very uh, supportive. So thank you so much for your enthusiastic participation. We'll get started with our program, with our session today. Uh, so today being the last session on leaders, leadership principles, as uh, shared previously, let me just share my screen. So based on what we have been discussing, today we are going to discuss on expert and being responsible always. Now, uh, today also we will have Srinivas sir with us. So those of you who have heard from him before, uh, last time he joined us for the session on relationship with his wife. And then today he's going to share his experience of principle-centered leadership because he has an uh, extensive experience as a lead in the corporate world. So I thought it uh, pretty apt for him to come and share his uh, experience with all of us. So he'll be joining us towards the end of the session. And uh, another most important thing that I wanted to share is, uh, I would request all of you to attempt the quizzes. Those of you who have not yet attempted for all the modules because uh, that would be considered when we are issuing the certificates for those of you who are completing the 21 day workshop. So please do attempt the quizzes uh, which are shared over Telegram to all of you. Okay, so let's get started. Today's first topic is expert or in, in scriptural terms, Daksh. So being expert is one important aspect of a leader. A leader is always at an advantageous position if he is highly skilled and he has in-depth subject matter knowledge. In general experience, you will see, I have seen in my company, if the leader, if the team lead or let's say if the project lead does not have idea about the technologies being used, the work that has to be done, lacks skills, what happens sometimes if the teammates are good, the delivery would be as good as they know. It would not be an expert guidance that comes from the lead. And many a times it happens that people under him may even try to cheat him because he doesn't know. So whatever they say, he has to accept. So that becomes a very tricky situation for the lead. If he is not having the right skill sets, both uh, soft skills, and hardcore core skills. Soft skills include dealing with people, communicating properly. All those are vital skills for a leader. So there are many, many skills which a leader should possess to be successful. And uh, looking at the Vedic society and looking at the Shastras, we have innumerable examples of how previously the education would highly be skill-based. It would not be like modern day, you go to a school and you memorize, memorize, memorize for years in your life, just to realize that all that you memorized is of no effect. I mean, is of no use to you when it comes to your job. Yes, I mean, I had that realization when I joined a, a, a software firm. I started my career with TCS, but then I did my engineering in uh, electronics and instrumentation. 
So four years, I, I was one of the toppers there. I slogged hard, I studied, I understood electronics, various difficult subjects. But then I started coding and I joined my job. And it was not difficult for me. It's just a different skill. Coding is a skill which I learned in hand, I mean, hands-on when I joined job. The point is, if we look at Vedic society, the education was very much focused on one's profession and the skills required in that. We, I just took an example of uh, the Pandavas. You all know this famous story. Uh, once Dronacharya, the, the teacher of the Pandavas who were teaching them the art of uh, fighting, warfare, you know, he used to teach them uh, wielding all kinds of weapons and using them how to how to be expert in archery or uh, with the mace fighting all that dronacharya used to teach so one day dronacharya wanted to test all his students so he told them all of you line up you know make a line and dronacharya had arranged for a wooden bird to be placed a very far distance on a tree, tree branch. So the bird was placed and he told also he brought all the Pandavas and Kauravas and everybody together and he told that you have to shoot the eye of the bird with your arrow. And what happened? So he called Yudhishthir and Yudhishthir aimed at the bird and was aiming and I was thinking, should I leave the row? Dronacharya asked, wait, what are you seeing? What do you see? Tell me. And Yudhishthir said, my dear Gurudev, I see you. I see the tree. I see the branches, the leaves. I see the wooden board. I see everything. And Dronacharya said, step aside, don't shoot. And then he called uh, Bhima. And Bhima said something very similar. He aimed and Dronacharya asked, what do you see? Oh, I see the tree. I see the kitchen behind the tree where food is being prepared. <laughs> and I see you, I see the sky. And Dronacharya said, step aside. Then came Duryodhan, you know, the head of the, the eldest of the Kauravas. And he was asked, what do you see? And he said, I see the sky, I see the sun, I see the tree, I see the branches, the, the bird. And then Dronacharya did not allow. So one by one, everyone went like that. And Dronacharya did not allow any, anyone to shoot. And then came Arjuna, his favorite student. And Dronacharya asked, Arjuna, aim. And uh, he asked, what do you see? And Arjuna said, I see the eye of the bird. And the Dronacharya asked again, are you sure? What else do you see? Tell me, what else are you seeing? And Arjuna said, I just see the eye of the bird. And the Dronacharya then said, okay, you can shoot. And that's when Arjuna shot and the arrow unmistakably shot the eye of the wooden bird. So the point is thus, to be a leader, from the very beginning, we should focus on developing the right skills. In the Vedic society, as I was telling, small children would be sent to Gurukul, where the Guru, who would be a very highly experienced person, would judge the nature of the student. And based on the nature, whether he is inclined towards administration, whether he is a Kshatriya, he is supposed to become a king or a prince or a warrior, he would get trained in uh, military tactics. If somebody is inclined towards studying or music, more Brahmanical, he would be trained in chanting mantras, performing yajnas, and yajan yajan patan patan dana pratigradha, the duties of a Brahmana. And that would be uh, trained to him, chanting Sanskrit verses in the perfect meter, all that would be uh, taught from the very childhood. And those who have other inclinations, many uh, important skills would be taught like 
stitching clothes, tailoring or uh, goldsmith's work, ironsmith's work, woodwork. Yes, all different kinds of arts would be taught and people would be trained up to be highly skilled. So that education was so complete that people will not have insecurity like us nowadays. Although we have studied so much throughout our school and then we have grown up and studied engineering or medical or whatever, every moment we are scared when we will, when we will lose our job and what will happen. Yes. Because our education has not been skill based. And now that we are in a job, we always know that we have to stay trained and we have to know the right skills to keep performing. Yes. So from a leader's point of view, it is vital that a leader himself stays expert, knows the right skill sets which are required to deliver the work that his team is doing. And it is also vital to develop a culture of learning and upskilling within the team. Many a times in corporate circles, managers, uh, at one point in time, they think, I don't need to upskill. Let modern, uh, so many technologies come up. I don't need to learn anything. And what they do is they just want to survive in their post. So neither, neither do they grow above, nor do they climb the ladder anymore. And they don't allow also anyone to grow. That creates a very unhealthy atmosphere. Yes, if the manager, or the leader stops upskilling. That's when you understand that the team becomes highly disbalanced. It's very, very easy to understand. I think you can relate to this. Uh, so as leaders, if you all go to a position and you have a chance to play a leader's role, please keep this in mind. Be a learner all the time. It will don't ever think that today I have achieved this post and position and I don't want, I don't need to learn anymore. Yes, I gave an example of Arjuna when he was very small, but as he grew up, he kept learning by himself more and more. At night he used to practice and later we see before the battle of Kurukshetra under the instructions and guidance of uh, Krishna, he went to different places, he went to the heavenly planets to collect weapons, to learn how to use those weapons based on the mantras. In those days, the weapons used to be persons, not just the material bow and arrow. The bow and arrow would be empowered by mantras. And through the mantras, the warrior would invoke the person weapon. Yes. So that was the science available that is. And Arjuna put thorough effort throughout till the war Till the war happened, he always upskilled himself. Yeah, so that's very important, and that's how we see in Vedic society the kings would never uh, sit at the back in his palace and keep giving instructions to the military. Nowadays, that happens in politics. The prime minister, the president, they're all safely sitting in their parliament building or the government building that they have been given and the soldiers are either instructed to go and fight or instructed to hold back you know based on the political decisions but in vedic society we see always the king is at the front whenever there's a battle the king is the person who lifts the morale of the whole army and he is not sitting at his palace he is the first one on his horse or chariot fighting. Yes, all the formations that would have, if you read Mahabharata, you will find all the formations that they made, all the leaders, the generals were at the front. It was not that they're hiding somewhere in the behind. And that required really high skill set. In same way, in our life, whichever team we are leading, if we want to stay at the front, if we want to accept the first fight, we want to move ahead, if we want to inspire the whole team to move ahead, it's important that we are rightly skilled. 
we have the right knowledge about the task that should go on we should have the right knowledge to deal with the people we should have the right knowledge to communicate well yes sometimes people say that what will happen if my team gets trained and they leave and go the important question is if they don't get trained and they stay that's a huge waste of time and they would be like a burden to you and you won't go anywhere after some time you would be uh, you would not have any relevance yes people will not pay attention and the leader who is not focusing on upskilling himself he gradually loses respect although the team members won't say directly on your face but there'll be a sense that oh this person doesn't know yes it will be very difficult for them to explain their approach to the leader and the leader being a superior he will tell no 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 i know well whatever i say is good whatever i say is correct you have to follow and the team knows technically well that this is not correct so there is a huge tussle that can come between the leader and the team if the leader is not upskilling <clears throat> and he will gradually lose respect people will take him cheaply and casually and tell this guy doesn't know anything he's just holding the position for a, for no use yes so that's why it's very important that we upskill and that's something that i in my personal life i took up very seriously especially after coming to iskon because when i was in college like any other boys i was staying in hostel with many friends and the only good thing that we would do is just, just study but uh, in my second year in the year 2007 i got introduced to devotees and iskon and then i i got into various services and i understood the fact that many any genuine religion shri prabhupada always tells that religion is something that teaches one to love and serve god and the very focus of our movement is service to krishna and devotees and i heard from my seniors that we should always be eager to serve and we should always be eager to take up more responsibility and we should always be ready whenever some service comes whenever some responsibility comes we should not tell a no so this this is kind of the, this is kind of inspiration that i had received in those days but i then started thinking that if opportunities come if services come if responsibilities come but i don't have the skill set how would i tell a yes how would i be ready to serve yes and that's when i tried my ha- my best to learn various skills from my seniors so i i got trained in uh, kartal playing playing mridangam musical instruments because i am much into kirtan so that's one important service that i do for temple i i participate uh, quite actively in kirtans and bhajans so i learned how to play mridangam some to some extent harmonium kartal yes that's one skill that i learned as i said before i learned cooking to some extent to survive because <laughs> we had to eat food without onion garlic vegetarian food especially in west bengal it's very rare to find so <laughs> to serve and to survive <laughs> i had to learn cooking to a great extent and then we had to it was a need to you know share these kind of sessions with other students the, the juniors who were coming from one batch to another in our college so we used to go to our juniors and share this message of bhagavad gita and that's when i had to learn public speaking as well i could not stay my own shy self i had to come out of my shyness and go out uh, speak to people give them bhagavad gita tell them to purchase and read so in that process i had to continuously develop some skill and that always helped me staying ahead of the game that always helped me to do more and more service take up more and more responsibilities and grow over the years yes so that's why this is an important quality for a leader being expert 
and Bhagavad Gita also there are uh, many qualities described for for a pure devotee and Daksha, Daksha expert is one of the qualities that's explained. So obviously you have noticed that whichever quality I describe, the example of Srila Prabhupada has to come because we see in Prabhupada a very very high and a very complete example as to what we should aspire to be. He can be set as our role model. At least I have him as our as my role model. When Srila Prabhupada at the age of 70 he went to US and he was dealing with the hippies. The hippies saw a person that he knew so many things. Srila Prabhupada when he went to US he carried a three level copper uh, brass cooker. Three level cooker which where he would one level he will arrange rice, one level dal, one level, one level sabji. He put on the gas and wonderful prasadam he would prepare and he was very expert. And when the movement started, when ISKCON started, Srila Prabhupada would single-handedly do everything. He would cook huge feasts. They used to call Sunday love feast. And lots of people used to come to the newly opened ISKCON centers in New York and San Francisco and many places. And Srila Prabhupada himself, wherever he would be, he would cook huge feasts around 20, 25 items for everybody. He was expert in playing Mridangam, Kartal, Harmonium, leading Kirtans. Obviously, he was very, very learned in philosophy. We have seen all his books. He has written so many books and he has translated so many books in his lifetime. He was a distinguished scholar. He knew Sanskrit very well. And Srila Prabhupada told us how his father, Gaur Mahande, had trained him from childhood. So in one of the videos, Srila Prabhupada tells us that he, he is playing Mridangam and he is telling that my father taught me. He wanted me to become like this. And my father made sure that I learned these devotional arts so that one day when I am in this position to open a worldwide organization, I'll be equipped with the right skill set. Yes. So Srila Prabhupada is an inspiration for us and he always showed us that it's important to develop the right skills. So as parents, we can encourage our children to develop multiple skills. We know many, I know many people who encourage children to learn some dancing, some musical instrument, uh, drawing or painting, various skills that are there, which can eventually help in various ways in different, different aspects. We don't know who will pursue what. Then, as ourselves as a leader, yes, please do not neglect upskilling, upskilling yourself. Learn the right skills and keep developing. So that's from a perspective of being expert. The next one is being responsible always. Now a quick uh, food for thought. I could have named it responsible. But why it is responsible always? What do you think? You can uh, mention in the chat, why have I named this slide as responsible always? Any guesses, any ideas, any thoughts? Can I see some responses in the chat? Owning and caring, okay. Girish is telling owning and caring, okay. Any other thoughts? Not leaving room to laziness. Good. That's nice. Apurva, perfect. Fair and worst situation. Whatever may be the outputs, the leader is responsible for that. Perfect. Kirtinam, thank you so much. Everyone sees us and So yes, everyone is observing. Correct. Many, many correct answers. Responsible always. Why? Because it's easy to take responsibility when glorification comes, when appreciation comes, when the rewards come, when the awards come, when client feedback comes good. We are ready. First, on, first in the line. 
I am the lead. I am the project lead. I am the tech lead. And everybody is just claiming ownership of all the credit that comes. And it's easy. When things good go, go good and it's fair weather, we say very typical term, fair weather. Yes. Yes, all of you are correct. You are the one who should take the responsibility as a leader in the good or worse situation. Perfect answer. Yeah, that's that's the point. So whether it's a good outcome or a bad, in fact, we will not discuss the good at all because it would be very natural. What ideally should happen is when the credit comes, please remember this. Do not forget to share the credit with the people who are working under you. Yes, you are responsible. You have done your contribution, but everybody has contributed to the success. And when failure is there, it's important that you stand with your team and take responsibility. It can apply to a team in office. It can apply to your family. It can apply to a group of friends also. So it's vital if you are in a leadership, leadership position, you should always be ready to take responsibility, no matter what is the outcome. It's bad or good. Yes, we have seen recently uh, the example of you know, the ISRO chief, how he was uh, crying when the mission failed, but then Narendra Modi hugged him and assured him, consoled him. But yeah, he's a genuine man. He is not making any excuses. He is telling, yes, I am responsible for it. A very nice example for us. So, I mean, you we, we may not know it, but as I stated in one of the points here, according to the scriptures, the king of the country is destined to get one sixth of the karmic reaction of his subjects. So if the subjects are impious, doing sinful activities, no matter what, the king is going to get the reaction of it, the karmic reaction of it. So that is why earlier days the kings knew this and it was their responsibility to make sure that the citizens were pious and they should follow the path of Dharma. Because if they don't follow, then he as a king has to take karmic reaction for their actions. So the, so the earlier days, the kings were very well aware of this. That's why we see in the life of Parikshit Maharaj, when he saw that uh, the Kali, Kali Raj, the personification of Kali, is attacking a bull and a cow. Yes, he has, he has injured a bull. Parikshit Maharaj became furious and he was about to kill Kali personified. Yes. Nowadays people are confused and they are debating on whether cow should cow killing should be banned or not. <laughs> so confused the whole the civilization is. It's so so sinful to kill pure animals like cows and bulls. So Parikshit Maharaj immediately stopped, stopped Kali. And that's, that's the thought how all kings led their, uh, whenever the way they ruled the kingdom was this. They made sure that dharmic principles are followed in their kingdom so that they also are responsible and they should not also get the bad karma of people under them. Yes. So this knowledge is important. In a very practical way also, if you are, let's say, uh, you're a parent and let's say one of your child gets caught stealing somewhere in somebody else's house. So what would you do? Would you not take responsibility? You have to take responsibility. Yes. So because you are responsible, obviously you have to stand with the child. You cannot tell, no, no, he has not done anything. I don't know anything. I don't believe that my child can style, steal. These are all symptoms of irresponsible behavior. You cannot say, okay, I don't know. He has not stolen. You are lying kind of things. But yes, accept and rectify. That's also a symptom of 
taking responsibility and that's something that we see in these two stories that i have quoted here so one the first one is lord vishnu and the chatus kumaras the story comes in bhagavatam where uh, it's narrated why these demons ravana and kumbhakarna or hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha you know and uh, kamsa and shishupal who were these personalities in their previous births so that story is explained in bhagavatam where it is said that there are two people or jay and vijay they were the gatekeepers of vaikuntha the home of lord vishnu in the spiritual world in vaikuntha planets vishnu stay and he has two four directions one direction one gate jay vijay was standing there are two two, two gatekeepers so once what happened these four children who you can see in the photo they are the chatus kumaras four children four sons of lord brahma so brahma created the four sons and he wanted them to progenate he wanted them to create more progeny and become praja become prajapatis but these boys they were highly spiritual minded they were brahman realized and they were always meditating on the impersonal form of lord they were impersonalists they were always meditating on that and they didn't want to get into uh, all these uh, materialistic dealings and create progeny and all that so they told brahma that oh dear father i respect you but i can't do this we can't do this so they because they were very powerful with their mystic power they could stay as small children because small children you know their life is pretty simple and they can they don't have much complications in their mind they don't have huge materialistic responsibilities so these chatush kumar these four kumaras sons of brahma they by their mystic power they stayed in a body which were like five year old kids and they were not bothered to wear dress and any materialistic uh, situation they used to roam around travel meditate upon the lord meditate upon the person personal form of the lord but once while traveling they reached vaikuntha and they reached that gate where jay vijay and jay vijay was standing so there because they were small kids jay vijay obviously they were doing their service but jay vijay said no no you can't enter uh, who are you i don't know you so you are not allowed to come in here and they became very angry and they said what is this you are standing in vaikuntha as a servant of vishnu and you have bodily consciousness you are seeing us as small kids you think we are uh, not important people you don't know how to give respect so they cursed jay vijay to take birth in the earthly planet and the story is very big later jay vijay because of the curse they take birth as uh, these demons so the point is that time when kumaras curse jay vijay lord vishnu comes out and that is why whatever it is is the reason why i am quoting this story here so lord vishnu tells that oh great saintly people this jay and vijay are my servants and whatever mistake they have done i am responsible for it yes so i am very sorry i please excuse them i beg for forgiveness on their behalf they are my servants and being their lead their master i am responsible please say please show some mercy and lord vishnu explains that it was his desire to fight you know so lord lord desires to do different different things and lord vishnu desired to fight and that's why that curse came out so lord said i i wanted to fight and that's why i arranged all this and the chatush kumars said we can give two options one is either you take three births as demons in the earthly planet or seven births as devotees in the earthly planet and jay vijay thought why to spend seven births in the material world better be three births as demons and that's why in three births they came as hiranyakashipu hiranyaksha 
and uh, Ravana and Kumbhakarna and uh, Shushupal and Dantakra, two people. So <clears throat> thus we see Lord Vishnu very nicely sets an example for us to learn that if something goes wrong in our team through our subordinates, we should immediately not shy away from taking responsibility and work hard to make the right changes to rectify the situation, to rectify the wrong that has been done. Support the team in rectifying the wrong. So that's, that's a wonderful example that Lord Vishnu is showing us. The other pastime here is of Dhruva Maharaj. Many of you might have heard Dhruva Maharaj was the son of Uttan Pad uh, in the great family of Swayamu Manu. And uh, once what happened is Uttan Pad had two wives, Suruchi and Suniti. Suruchi was very well mannered and very wonderful devotee. And Suniti was beautiful and she was the favorite wife of the king. So from Suniti, Uttanpad had a son named Uttama. And from Suruchi, he had a son named Dhruva. So this Dhruva and Uttam were stepbrothers. So once what happened, Dhruva, he saw his brother sitting on his father's lap. He also felt like uh, sitting on father's lap and uh, enjoying his love. So he, has, he was very small, like five years kid. So he just went playing to his father and climbed on his lap and sat. But Suniti, uh, sorry, if I, I don't know, I've got the name wrong or not. Suruchi and Suniti. Suniti is the other wife. I think Suruchi is the uh, mother of Uttama. Suniti is the mother of Dhruva, I guess. One was beautiful, more favorite to the king. The Dhruva's mother was not favorite of the king. So Suruchi came and she said, Saurapru, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I Maybe I'm confused, but. Yes, it is correct. So, so yeah, Suruchi. Is Dhruva. Yeah. Sorry? Dhruva's mother, Suniti. And uh, Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so Suruchi sees that Dhruva climbs to the king's lap and is sitting there and she comes and says, how can you sit on your father's lap? And she sees with her envy that Dhruva is trying to sit on the throne because she is the favorite queen of the king and she wants her son Uttam to uh, be the successor to the throne after King Uttanpath. And that's why this Suruchi speaks very harshly to Dhruva. And to that small boy, she's telling that you're not qualified to sit on your father's lap because you have not taken birth from my womb. If you want to sit on the throne, you have to take birth again from my womb. So to do that, you perform sacrifice and austerities and worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then when you take birth from my womb, that time you can sit on your father's lap. You know, so harsh words. And Dhruva could not take it. He was a Kshatriya boy by nature. He could not accept that insult. His body started trembling and he ran to his mother, Suniti. Now, <clears throat> here's what I, why I uh, quoted this example. Suniti was a wonderful devotee and uh, when she heard such an, inst such an uh, incident had happened, she became very, very morose and very sad that her son had to experience such, uh, such a disrespectful situation. But amazingly, and what is the glory of Suniti here? I'm sorry, I'll edit the slide after this, but yeah. Suniti shows a wonderful example here. She tells that, my dear Dhruva, it is my fault that I am not the beloved wife of the king. So please do not take an offense of what your mother has 
what your stepmother has told, Suruchi has told. Please do not take an offense. It is my fault. And she takes, so she is so humble and down to earth. And genuinely, she tells that it is my fault that I am not your father's favorite wife. And that's why you had to go undergo this experience. And your stepmother was correct. You have to worship and pacify and uh, perfect your life by worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. Then your life will be successful. And she said, I have heard from the sages that you can find uh, the Supreme Lord in the forest. So Dhruva Maharaj, without much delay, left his palace, left his comforts, went to the forest. Then the story continues. So the important point why I quoted the story here is how wonderfully Suniti as an exemplary uh, parent and she is in a position of a lead in the family as an example to look up to for her son. She is showing this uh, wonderful glorious quality of being responsible always. Yes. So these are the two stories that immediately came to my mind. Obviously, there can be many more, many more examples. Um, but yes, that's something that I wanted to share today with all of you. So without further delay, let me check if Srinivas sir is there. Srinivas sir, are you there with us? Okay, yeah, I can see. I'm so, there. That, that's something that I wanted to discuss so far. Thank you so much for your patience. I would request uh, Srinivas sir to share with us his realizations on principle-centered leadership. Thank you. You are able to hear me? Yes. I can Loud and clear? It. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So, thanks all for joining. Uh, and uh, thank you, Sandran sir, for giving me this opportunity again. Um, I, I hope it's audible for all of you. What I so uh, with this topic for today, that is uh, Hare Krishna, <laughs> Hare Krishna to everyone. Uh, with this topic of uh, leadership, I wanted to share some of my experiences and uh, some of the uh, practical implications that I had to. Um, I kind of trying to imbibe uh, what I've heard from Shastras also, what I what I understood from my interactions um, after taking up the process of Krishna consciousness and how these principles we can implement and practice as well. Yeah. So uh, I started, you know, my my career was was from you know if so if I talk about you know I've I've gone through for example I've gone through multiple industries, right? And the last industry that I am stuck onto for the past you know 20 years or so is the IT industry. So if I talk more of the IT industry that we are in and uh, I'm not sure how many of you are part of the IT industry uh, and again it is not just relevant to the IT industry but it, it kind of spans across any industry that you take you, you can name you know it's this, this leadership quality spans across any industry. Now uh my the, my experience from the it industry it started i started as a you know, as a pure developer in those years uh you know i'm not sure how many of you know the web web bubble was there which bursted and you know so many economic issues that happened so i started somewhere below that uh before that and uh i see somebody has raised hand um so I started as a developer, uh, you know, then moved on to be a team leader and then sort of module leader and then getting into all those roles, you know, we call it as some of the, the companies that I worked, we had roles like associate manager um, and then took on to the role of uh, also some technical lead roles and all those things. And then finally uh, getting into the role of a project manager. Um, so all these, you know, all these roles. I think uh, the quality of, though you call it as a you know, manager, uh, there is a difference between being a manager and a leader. So if I talk purely on a leadership um, quality, 
if if you break the word leadership there is a leader in it and there is a ship in it right now uh, if you take the example of a ship itself right uh, so leadership is basically a notion of leading someone uh, leading someone whether it is individual or whether it is a group right so it's about leading someone to a particular destination that is what uh, leadership is about um similar to the i mean the example of a ship a captain who you know who who's who guides the ship to a to a particular destination because he knows this the ship has to go to that particular des destination so the sh captain of the ship using all his qualities using all his skills will guide the ship and take everyone to that particular destination um if you say i you know if a leader who is not in his you know good senses or he doesn't follow the quality he can take the ship to a you know you know to a to wrong destination but whereas a leadership leader who knows exactly where is the destination how to reach there and how to go together that is important you don't drop people you know off board at particular points and you know and reach with you started with 100 people and reach only with 10 people so you don't do that right so it's a responsibility of the captain so leadership is about that's what is that leadership it is about taking everyone to a particular destination uh and in in the right in the right mode uh, and i know that is that is what is leadership was is about so overall over the years in my experience uh uh i have seen uh as i said multiple roles have gone through i have seen people different leaders you know i have seen managers also who are pure you know focused you know mujhe i want this to be done by hook or crook this has to be done i have seen such kind of people i have seen leaders who lead by examples yeah uh, so oh, eventually what happened was over this period when i you know from my past career i have found that there are a couple of principles and and also looking at the other leaders who i have worked with managers or leaders i have worked with uh there are few things that stand out you know in sort in uh, in the form of principles first one definitely is truthfulness i just name those first one is truthfulness second one is you have to consult you have to consult your seniors for that matter you also basically it's about taking knowledge if you feel that uh, so that, that's that's a second one consulting seniors as and when needed that's second third is definitely you know which is working hard and not hardly working yeah fourth one which i have dotted is avoiding duality avoiding duality and uh, one of the most important principle which i really take care of is taking accountability and last but not the least which i follow not only in my work but in my life as well i try to follow it as as much as possible is you know think 10 times 20 times 100 times before you take a decision but once you take a decision you have to stick to that no matter whether it is good or bad yeah you can you know eventually try to if it go in a different direction you can eventually try to do some modifications and adjustments on the way but once you're taking a decision after thinking 100 10 times or 10 or 10 times or 100 times do not go back on the decision and that's that's the credibility that you have now if i go to the first one where i said truthfulness um this is basically the value of your word yeah i have seen people who and and not, not even seen i mean I, even now itself and i've just had been on a call some time back you now for one of my project where uh, people think something say something and do something yeah so truthfulness i feel i have it's it's a most important part where i try to follow that whereas because that gives that gives a base to your um you know whether it you say it's a credibility or relationship with your team with your peers with your seniors um uh, as far as my career goes 
the number of projects that I worked into, a number of deals that I have worked into, even today, even today, if I pick up the phone and call anyone, I can still reach out to them, talk to them, you know, purely on a relationship basis, basis because they, I, they have, you know, when we have worked along, when I have worked along with them, they, they know that, you know, if, if, uh, if Srini has said something, uh, that definitely will be for the good of the project and also for the good of my career, right? So that person knows very well. And this is what I try to, you know, try to keep myself, uh, you know, embedded to uh, being, so that, you know, this, these are the relationships that, these are the things that help for me to go back to all my other colleagues whenever, as and when needed. So truthfulness is what, one of the aspects that where they say, they know that yes, if Shini has said that, uh, whether it is, you know, uh, whatever customer has passed on the message or whoever it is, it has to be, it has to be, you know, it has to be right. It has to be true, right? So truthfulness is a very important aspect. Second one is, as I said, was consulting seniors. That is where uh, it's all about taking knowledge. Now here, uh, as a leader, yeah, as a leader, I mean, I have led uh, in my ex in my past experience, I have led a team of uh, you know the uh, almost around 80, 80 odd eighty odd team members were there. And I have also led team member of a uh, project of two men, two team members. Yeah. Um, wherein, you know, even though it, the numbers doesn't matter, it's, it's more about how you lead that team. Yeah. So in this case, whenever in consulting seniors, whenever, you know, I felt that, you know, uh, I don't, I lack this particular knowledge. I don't. Um, you know, feel shy or, you know, I don't look back as to, you know, uh, yo, how am I supposed to reach out to that particular person who's junior to me or, you know, he might, uh, or, or for that matter, even any other peers, right? It, it's uh, most of the ego clashes happens when you, you deal with the peers. Uh, that is when, because that those are equals, right? So that is when we feel that, you know, you know how can he know more than me? But this is where our humility in the right sense helps us. And it has helped me, believe me, I go by my experience. I don't shy off from learning from anyone, whether it is my juniors or, and, and you know, also appreciating them that yes, I have learned from you, I have done that. Uh, juniors or whether it is peers. Seniors, obviously, seniors or a trainer, obviously, you know, we really don't mind. But the issue comes when you deal with juniors and peers where you want to really learn from lessons. You know, because no one is perfect, right? No one is, no one is hundred percent up to the mark. So there are difficulties. I mean, there are defects that we have. So we have to deal with that. But never shy off from, you know, taking advices, uh, you know, from either your juniors or peers. Because see, implementing is up is on our hand. But there is no uh, dearth of advices available um, around. But it's up to you to understand and deal with it accordingly. But do not shy off. Uh, working hard than hardly working. Uh, this is one thing which, uh, obviously, you know, it depends on the work that you have. But uh, uh, you you have to you have to, you know, give your work, uh, you know, ample time so that you do do justice to the responsibility that you have. Uh, especially. After taking up to the process of Krishna consciousness, there is there are certain aspects you know of, of lifestyle right that we get added uh, along with our life, uh, especially when you take up to the process. Um, being a you know I have worked for fourteen hours, I have worked for sixteen hours, I have worked for you know there are there are never times that I worked around the clock. You know there was once a time where you know I had to I was almost done with my work. It was 9 45 10 in a night there was a call and then i had to sit all the way night till 3 45 4 a.m in the morning so there were times so we have to work hard but what happens is um and this also and that is and that and that is the reason i said that was after taking up the process i had to you know there are things which got get added when you take up to the spiritual life which you know we have to balance out uh, along with our material life also so this aspect of working hard yeah and obviously, you know, working intelligently also, so work smartly, right? Uh, this is very important because if you work smartly, 
and intelligently, uh, you can balance out your time. Yeah. Um, especially if it's needed when we, you know, uh, you know, have our other responsibilities, you know, being a, you know, being a grihastha, we have our responsibilities to the family to give time to them. So these all aspects are very important, most important, basically. So in that perspective, uh, working hard, working smartly, working intelligently is very important so that you can balance out your responsibilities. Uh, third, fourth aspect is, or rather fourth principle, which I try to follow is taking accountability. Now, what I mean by that is as a project manager or, or as a lead, yeah, and, and as I said earlier, it doesn't matter which industry you are, it is, it is common across, it spans across the industries. Taking accountability uh, as a lead, as a leader, I have ensured, and this I have learned from my seniors also, that whenever there is an issue, okay, uh, whenever there is a there is a possibility that you know I might get some negativity from the customer or there is a blame that is coming up, I have to, and that, this again, as I said, I have seen my seniors also doing that. I have to stand in front, in front of the team, right? I have to stand in front of the team. The team should be, I should take all the, you know, the, the, the blame or the negativity to me directly and filter it out and pass on. Do not pass as is. And this is what something which I learned. But at the same time, if there are credits, 100% give off to the team. This is what I understand or this is what I practice means uh, by what I mean by uh, taking accountability. Also taking ac accountability means that I am, and this particular nature, right? Where I, I take or shield the team from all the negativity and the blame, whereas the entire credit, I just pass on to the, to the team, right? This comes obviously by practice, but this comes when you take accountability of your work that you have. And this, uh, this particular attitude uh, does not even help, you know, not only helps in your material aspects also, but also from your, uh, you know, family aspects or whichever role you are with brother, sister, father, husband, mother, whichever role you are, it also helps a lot. And because the people who look up to you, you know, uh, either as a role model or as a senior or whichever ways, they will, uh, they will obviously appreciate the fact that yes, when there were bad times, you were always there in front of them. So this is one aspect which I which I am uh, I practice and you know I am also guiding uh, you know my peers or sorry my you know, juniors who are there who I feel can take up to the to the next level I, I I give them this advice also and they have seen uh, you know you know me practicing also yeah uh, one of the other important aspect is avoiding duality what I mean by this is uh, there are some you know, terms used in the industry, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to use those terms, but here I have seen people doing that. You know, I have also seen my seniors doing that. What I mean by that is if uh, one of the word for that is, you know, uh, the backbiting, right? You say something in front of the person and behind the person, you say something else. And this is, this is common across, right? And I, um, I hate that particular attitude. I have seen it happening to myself also, um, even from my, you know, one of the last projects that I was managing, it has happened over there also. So this is one aspect which I really, really don't appreciate in anyone. And I also try not to follow this particular attitude of, I, want, I mean, of duality, you know, kare kuch and, you know, you know bare kuch or that way. Uh, what happens is once you do that, right, um, if you if you have found that you know you are doing some backbiting and you are you are not behaving and 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 believe me uh, in, in this last instance which had happened uh, the team member that I was working with for whom this had happened he came and told me Shrini this is what has happened so you see what is happening the person came to know that somebody else had you know done a backbiting on him and then he came up to me saying Shrini this is what has happened yeah. How, what kind of a trust that person will have on that other person, right? So this is the aspect that I really, you know, try to avoid, uh, basically, you know, duality, dual kind of a nature, yeah? Um, and lastly, what I uh, also practice, and this is, 
not from in a, uh, in a work perspective, I also try to practice uh, in my life also. And this I've learned from my seniors and also from devotees, you know, who I've interacted with. That is uh, basically, before you take a decision, whether it is, you know, uh, any kind of, any, any important decision, you have to, and, and if, it is, if it is for me alone, or for it is for my family, and if, especially in a Grihastha life, the husband and wife together have to take the decision. Um, that, which is basically think 10 times, 50 times, 100 times on the decision, contemplate, churn it out, and then take a decision. But once you take a decision, do not go, go, up, go you know, out of the decision. Whatever comes, because whatever good or bad that comes out of it, it is my responsibility. I, I'm, I'm accountable for that. And this this is also true for our you know, work life or you know or our social life or for that matter our own life right you know? there are really some some important things that you know um, comes to my mind when i talk about leadership and my past my experience that i have gone through in all these years you know almost 20 25 years of industry experience uh, some of the points that i see there are some of the points that are many more aspects you know uh, some sentences are also had pointed out probably in our in our in a part presentation, but these are some of the aspects that I try to take care of when I you know I deal with deal in the industry um, you know with the, with the with the peers. But finally, uh, one of the most important aspect uh, that I that I really cherish and I keep as my you know goal or rather role model um, is uh, Shila Prabhupada, the founder actually of Iskon. Right. Uh, those who all know how Shila Prabhupada started of this movement, they will know what I'm talking about. Uh, here's a person who, at the age of 70, takes 40 rupees and goes off to the Western world. And after a couple of years, he has 108 centers. He has, you know, uh, you know, the money has expanded. And there are 100, 100, I mean, so many centers, so many people are following him. And so many centers means lot of leadership and management has to be needed has to be done he has empowered so many of his disciples to beautifully and efficiently manage uh, a single center in the entire show so uh, he's one of my uh, you know one of my role models uh, and and when i when i look back from a leadership perspective right uh, now uh, what i also practice is reading from the scriptures. Uh, what I mean by that is I, you know, there are three major books, the books that I keep, you know, reading. One definitely is the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, second is Chaitanya Charitamrita. These are some books that, you know, within Iskon, there are some important scriptures that we follow. And the third is Prabhupada Lila Amrita. These are some of the books, scriptures that, you know, give you a lot of insight into how to deal with situations, um, you know, especially for you know leaders or managers. You know, these are really wonderful scriptures where you know a lot of incidents and pastimes are there, which will help you understand how to deal with that. Or if it is, if this is a situation, what is the outcome? So you also know the result, right? So you can deal efficiently with those particular situations also. So um, yeah, with this, I end. These are a few two cents from my experience. Uh, Sandran Prabhu, I hope you know I could make some sense. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you for joining us today. Uh, very, very practical, and uh, many points you touched which are important and I had not covered also. So thank you so much. Really, thank you. My appreciate pleasure. your help. Do you have okay? So over to the participants. The floor is open. The chat window is all open. And Shrinivasar is there. Do you have any questions? Really, give me just a few okay. seconds. I just switch on my charger. What if some of our decisions might hurt someone? But that decision is very important for us. How do we handle that situation? Mm. Hurt in what sense? And rather, you have to be a bit more specific because uh, if you can give an example of a scenario, that would help because it varies from person to person. Hurt emotionally. Okay. Um, again, I would say this. This would vary on the dis. 
it, it would vary if we have to communicate that decision. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it happens many a times and rather we have to take decisions which are stern and strict and might emotionally hurt others. We should not at least intentionally try to hurt anyone. We should conduct or execute the decision in a way that the other person understands why it is important for me to take that decision. Yes, it happens because many a times when we are in a leadership position, it is not possible to please everyone. Yes, uh, it is said that <clears throat> if you want to please everyone, you can sell ice creams. An ice cream seller pleases everyone. So a leader, a person who's in a responsible position need not necessarily always be pleasing. They, he might have, he or she might have to take decisions which are harsh. But then the relationship that you have with your team would decide whether although they don't like your decision, they would appreciate that the decision is for a greater good and they would accept it. Yes, does that make sense, Anuradha? So if your team knows that you have a better experience and you are having a point of view, a vision, which is uh, in line with the higher principle. Okay, so like I am now studying at Akola, but now in this lockdown, my family is expecting that I should stay with them for a long time. But due to this, my studies are disturbing. Okay. You see, um, this, is a, this is a very particular case. I mean, uh, maybe what I was thinking is different, but this is a very particular case. So you have to openly discuss with your parents and present your concerns that your studies are getting hampered. Now, yes, parents would want us to uh, stay with them longer time and your concern is studies. So if you discuss openly with, a, uh, with an approach to solve both the problem with one solution, then it might work out because you might arrange for a separate room where nobody comes to disturb you and you set your timelines when you study. At that time, nobody calls you for anything. So that way you can stay with the parents also and study also. So it, it many a times, instead of just guessing, or instead of internally feeling depressed that, oh, I want to stay here also, but I want to study also, better to discuss with your family. Yes, because parents are always worried that uh, my child would stay away and if something happens, who will take care? There's a pandemic all around, what will happen and all that. So that concern is also genuine, yes. The studies is also important. Your staying healthy and fit is important. And that's why your parents' concerns are also valid. So I would suggest have an open discussion and understand whether you can come to a middle path, not extremes. It's not just that I leave parents and only study or I leave studies and stay with parents. Discuss and come to a middle path where you can find out ways <clears throat> to stay with your parents, find out a room where you can study exclusively or a timing where you can study exclusively. That would be my immediate thoughts. Does that answer your question, Anuradha? And I'm sure if you, uh, I mean, if you present, your parents will also appreciate your concern for studies. They'll appreciate that you're serious with your studies. Any other questions, thoughts? So as I said, all of you, please attempt the quizzes because that's important for us to uh, decide who's getting the completion certificates. Friday is going to be a important day, the closing event. We will have wonderful programs. We'll have Narayan Chetan Prabhu addressing us. And we might have a Kirtan. I'm not sure if uh, the arrangement comes about correctly. We'll have a closing event, grand one, on Friday. Okay, so I have a question here. Proji, many people around us will have duality behavior how to deal with. And if you are straightforward in the society, it might affect us in some manner. 
as we have a famous quote like straight trees, trees will cut first okay see i think the duality that shrinivas sir was talking about is uh, something in the front and something at the back which is duplicitous nature yes so we need not be duplicitous we may be stern at times and strict to the principle yes we need not be political and duplicitous but we should not be naive at all you know shrinivas sir if you are there if you want to add to this point uh, most welcome yeah i'm there yeah yeah so this i think this is a very uh, pertinent problem that we are seeing here mm. you know uh, how to, uh, we 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 are you know we deal with a society who is you know i would say uh, i am infected with this kind of a behavior now we have to deal with in this uh, for this particular situation a very case to case basis yeah uh, also we have to ensure that you know our interests are also not sacrificed in that particular you know um, dealing or you know behavior as uh, you know dealing with such a situation so um, one of i mean if if you ask me uh, whatever my experience has happened earlier uh, i have dealt with such situation on a case to case basis uh, what i mean by that is if that particular situation or if that person you know is important for me for example if i see that nature in you know one of my near and dear ones right i have to deal that a little separately if i see that nature in somebody else you know whether in my work work area or you know somewhere else right i have to deal accordingly so it all depends on this basis but yes you are right that you know if you are straight forward uh, i mean i understand from that point that if you are straight forward means if you are blunt yes it affects because if you are blunt and you are speaking the truth you know it definitely uh, you know uh, you know people around need everything sugar coated right so obviously at times we can give that but not to all because that means you are diluting our own nature so dealing with such situations will be case to case basis on who are you you know dealing with you know in a person or a collective so it all depends on how you you know how that particular situation would impact you so because i would i would definitely prefer that you know we take more cognizance of the impact of that particular situation on us yeah so that is very important in every cases we have to you know keep mind and you know uh, keep keep be aware of that particular st uh, state also i'm not sure when I'm, there might be a direct answer to this but you know some of the aspects is what i wanted to highlight thank you any other questions anybody okay so i think we are done for the day we are past 15 minutes of our time thank you so much yes thank you thank you very much sanvaran sir and shrinivas sir for giving your valuable time thank you yeah and thank you we also got to learn so many things on leadership aspects so today basically on uh, how to become expert leader as well as uh like hari krishna and how to become the responsible in our dealings with others so thank you very much sir thank Harik. you sir for thank you for mm -hmm. arranging this and giving us opportunity thank you so much hari krishna thank you hari krishna hari krishna